And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first episode of the Vinnie Eastwood Show, bringing together the most fabulous, dark, occulted, mystic, knowledge, wisdom, truth, etc. My very special guests joining me today to mark the kicking off of a new age, a new degree, maybe even the 34th one will be Santos Bonacci from Australia and the Universal Truth School dot com. Say hello, Santos. Hello, Vinny. Thank you very much for having me on the show. And in the blue corner, wearing the Masonic black and white shorts, we have Jordan Maxwell, who is still here. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still here, Vinny, and happy to be on the show. Jordan Maxwell show. Dot com as as the uh, as the blippity blue for that one there and this topic for today is something that is very personal for both of my guests and very uh, shall we say unknown to me and I'd probably include with the royal me including pretty much everybody who doesn't know the Jehovah's Witnesses inside and out you know these people that come to your door and um, the, the the reason they get out of uh, uh, police speeding tickets and things like that. You know, cop pull, pulls a Jehovah's Witness over. I've got a, I've got a fine here for you. Well, have you got some time to talk about our Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll let you off with a warning. Now, I'd like to see if we can encapsulate this here. What, who, <laughs> indeed, define the parameters? Is the Jehovah's Witness organization who would like to start? Well, maybe I will, um, because there are a few things I think need to be said before we even enter into this subject. For one thing, uh, I, I'm i not in any way uh, saying anything about Jehovah's Witnesses, the people, because I know them. I was one for a while, and my mother was one. So I know that there are a lot of very, very good, sweet, and very decent people who are in uh, who belong to Jehovah's Witnesses? So, I'm in no way talking about them. <clears throat> but uh, as a matter of fact, some of the people that I have met Jehovah's Witnesses were well, some of the nicest and most decent people you'll ever want to meet. So we're not talking about the people. Just as uh, when I talk about the Vatican, I'm not talking about the Catholic people. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about organizations. So. That's, I'd like to, you know, set the matter straight. We're not complaining or, or condemning Jehovah's Witnesses as a people. But no we're more, talking about... No more than you'd yeah. condemn the people who serve you the burger at McDonald's when you criticize the CEO putting uh, ingredients <laughs> that aren't fit for human consumption in the produce. Right, right. But they're not responsible for that. And, uh, and you're not responsible, you know, and, uh, but you are responsible for eating it. So... Uh, I, I have a very warm place in my heart for Jehovah's Witnesses. I know so many of them, and they've been very good people. But uh, I would say, and I think Santos would, would agree, that probably anywhere from 50 to 75% of the overseers, the elders and the, and the men in the congregations around the world who are in charge of the different congregations, the ministers, so to speak, are themselves pompous, arrogant, self-centered, egotistical, because most have never had a, a position of responsibility in their life, and finally they get a place in the congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses where they are ministers and they're in charge, and for the first time they can be in charge of something and, and start lording it over everybody else because they're in charge. And so there are some very... Uh, there are some few uh, elders and ministers and Jehovah's Witnesses who are very decent, very fine people. But by, large, by and large, I think that the overwhelming majority are very self-centered, egotistical, and self-serving uh, because they're climbing the power, they're climbing the ladder to power within the organization. But that happens in all uh, all organizations, unfortunately. But... So what I'm saying is that Jehovah's Witnesses are no different than anybody else on the earth. There's always good, there's bad, 
there's brilliant intelligence, there's stupidity. Anytime you get people into an organization, we're not condemning the people. We're talking about the facts of the, of the corporation, the company, and the concepts and the ideas. So I just wanted to make sure people understand that. I have nothing against Jehovah's Witnesses as a people. Because he used to be one. His mum was one. And you get the idea, ladies and gentlemen. I presume uh, similar sentiments from you, Santos. Yeah, that was well said. I agree that that is uh, simply a... Uh, oh, we're getting some fat. really bad oh. talk chatter on your line there, Santos. Can't oh, really? You. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's, let's try that again. <laughs> is, is that better? I think a little bit. Yeah, okay. Well, I'll just try and... Uh, change the position of the mic, it might be a bit faulty. Uh, yeah, I agree with um, that wonderful um, prefacing of this, uh, this topic. It's um, simply because organisations which have people in them uh, will always have a mixed uh, eclectic um, group to contend with and so that's already going to be you know, something to have to manage. Yeah. Um, but uh, certainly it's the organisation here that we are going to um, reveal s certain facts about the organisation because what's really going on here is there are two churches really going on there's the Church of the Living and the Church of the Dead now the Church of the Dead is the what they call the organisation you know it's corporatised uh, hence the title uh, Watchtower and Track Society Incorporated. Uh, I've brought this out um, to many Jehovah's Witnesses because I did do about probably 35 years of my life with the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, and I can go into a little, just a brief history to um, so that people know that I know who I'm talking about here. I, 35 years I was a ministerial servant. I served in a Portuguese speaking congregation in Melbourne for four years, Italian speaking congregation for four years in the northeast of Victoria, Wangaratta, Myrtleford. I um, served in some Spanish, just uh, giving uh, talks etc etc and all the English speaking um, people know me too especially in Victoria you know I was um, quite well known yeah. so um, but uh, the corporation is corpse means dead and it's every, all corporations are under the Vatican that's what I'll um, say I'm not going to elaborate about that um, because I've done that and so was Jordan in many, many of our works. And so that's all taken care of. All corporations come under the mother, the whore of Babylon, the umbrella of all umbrellas. And it probably goes back to Constantine and the donation of Constantine. Or you could go back probably to the Flavian dynasty or the Julian dynasty that set this up. Uh, Pope Boniface, of course, in 1300 did uh, some damage with his papal bull. So anyway, that's more than I wanted to say. And um, I'll probably hand it over to Jordan. Now, Santos, also, your microphone may be a little bit close to a, a, a computer or something. We hear this kind of low uh, hum over the time. But anyway, uh, Jordan, would you like to pick up where he left off? Well, yeah, I, I would even say that, uh, or explain uh, a little more, that corporations, as, uh, as Santos said, are are actually dead because they, are, you know, you can't take a corporation, you can't take uh, the Watchtower Bible uh, Track Society as a company, as a corporation. You can't take the Watchtower Society out for dinner. Uh, it's it's a, just a name. It's just a name of a company. So it has no life. It's just the name of a corporation. Uh, and so there is, a, uh, there is the church, as uh, Santo said, the church of the living and the church of the dead. Well, the church of the dead is a corporation, a company. But the church of the living are the actual living people in it. Now, that's different. The, the, now we're talking about the people. So tonight, we're not talking about the people, the church of the living. We're talking about the church of the dead. 
meaning the corporations, which are actually have no real life at all. They're just a just a corporate name. Are they so, are they <clears throat> registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission? Because we've looked up that uh, New Zealand itself is uh, a corporation under the Queen and Right of New Zealand, registered at the SEC. Is it the same for the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Church of the Dead? I would suspect so, because I also know that the Mormon Church is a corporation. Uh, and uh, and we found out, and I I was uh, shocked to find out that uh, Islam, the very religion of Islam, is a corporation soul. Uh, on the British uh, in in Britain, it's considered a corporation, a company, and it's called a corporation soul in England. And I would uh, send uh, some of that information and in documents. To uh, to you, <clears throat> that's interesting. That even Islam is a company. Well, so could uh, could Islam then be uh, uh, defined as sole traders? Probably, yeah. Uh, it, it, that's the kind of thing that Santos is so good at breaking down how these corporations are intermingling cosmic ideas about living people and how they own your body and your soul. Etc. So, yeah, I'm sure that there's a lot of information that needs to be brought out about Islam, Judaism, and Christianity as corporations, as companies, because that's what they are. They're on the stock market. I mean, it's an incredible story of how this stuff really works. And, of course, Jehovah's Witnesses are right in the middle. You've got to figure they're right in the middle of all of this if they're in New York City. In Brooklyn, now my God, anybody who lives in America knows what Brooklyn is all about. Brooklyn is the center and has been for a long time, for many, many years. Brooklyn, New York has been the center for mafia, for Jewish Zionism, for all the uh, corruption, all the underworld stuff that's been going on in America. It's a very serious area of corruption and a cult power in Brooklyn, New York. Well, that was the home, and that's the home of of Jehovah's Witnesses mm. uh, corporations, up until recently. Uh, corporations get involved in things for the money, generally. So the question is, where does the money come from to feed this corporation, and where does the money go once it's been sucked in? <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good question. I... I can answer that. Many years ago, back in 1980s, early 80s, I went to an international convention here in Los Angeles of Jehovah's Witnesses. And at that international convention, there were three members, three of the members of the governing body. There's a, there's a handful of men, I think there's 12 of them, in New York, headquarters for Jehovah's Witnesses, that actually run the organization. There are 12 men, just like the Mormon Church has 12 uh, 12 prophets who run the Mormon church. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses have 12 men also who run their church, and there's there's a reason why it's always 12 at the top. But anyway, uh, I was at an international convention here in Los Angeles back in the early 80s, <clears throat> and I knew two of the members of the governing body personally, Dan Selick, and I uh, can't remember the other guy's name now, <clears throat> It was an old Greek guy. And uh, so after the uh, convention was over, uh, the governing body members, there were three of them, and all of the people around them, their entourage, were all going out to dinner. <clears throat> and I was invited to go. And uh, at dinner, uh, I, I, there was a young man there, young Greek young Greek guy there who was the um, accountant for, he was the chief accountant for the Watchtower Bible Tract Society, Jehovah's Witnesses headquarters in New York, and he was the chief accountant. And so we're talking about the organization, etc., and I'm just listening to these uh, these big shots talking about the company and about the corporation, etc. <clears throat> and then I ask him, I asked this young man, I said, uh, in the yearbook, you know, in the in the books which are printed by the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, this was in early '80s. I said, uh, in the most recent uh, book on your on your company, 
uh, it says that you have spent like $65 million uh, just on salaries alone. $65 million on salaries alone for this year. And so I ask him, and that does not include all of the construction, all of the <clears throat> buildings and property which is being bought all over the world by Jehovah's Witnesses. So my question is, where are you getting the money? <clears throat> because I live here in Los Angeles, and uh, and the congregations here are you know are just scraping and getting by from month to month on contributions, and yet the New York headquarters is spending sixty five million just in salaries alone around the world, and so and so there's an enormous amount of money that's being spent each year by the organization. <clears throat> the world headquarters. So I asked him, where are you getting the money? And he said to me, he said, the corporation called you, the Watchtower and Bible Tract Society Company has what is called an open-in account with two of the major banks in America. One is, is the, uh, this is back in the 80s. He said one of the, one of the banks is the uh, uh, Chase Manhattan Bank and the other is the Morgan Guarantee Bank in uh, Philadelphia. Morgan Guarantee and Chase Manhattan, <clears throat> we have a open in corporate accounts with them. And the, and, the, and the governing body are sitting there listening to me talking to their chief accountant. And it became very quiet because now you're talking about the money. Now you're talking about where the uh, you know where the real power is, and so they were listening to see what was going to be said. <clears throat> and so he told me, he said, "We have open end accounts with both of those banks." And I said, "What do you mean by an open end account?" And he says, "Basically, both banks uh, give us a checkbook once a year, and whatever checks we write are covered. Period. No matter what it is." It's an open in account. We write the checks, and they are they are they're good, <clears throat> and whatever you know. And so there's no limit on it. Well, <clears throat> that told me something right then because Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for talking about the the evil, corrupt uh, politicians and bankers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, at the time, Chase Manhattan and Morgan Guarantee Trust. Morgan Guarantee Trust was uh, was affiliated with uh, the Rothschild banks out of England, and everybody knows about the Rockefeller banks in New York, Chase Manhattan, and here this uh, accountant is telling me, no, no, the Chase Manhattan and Morgan Guarantee Trust are financing us with an open in account. Whatever we need, we write the check. It's good. So I don't know what that tells you. Go back and think about it. Uh. When it comes to money, if somebody gives you money, they want something back for it, an exchange. What's the exchange? What are the Jehovah's Witnesses doing for the bankers? Well, I think that's very obvious. What they're doing is that Jehovah's Witnesses are a, uh, are a Jewish Zionist operation. Uh, I've known that for many, many years. They are, they are being financed by secret funds that uh, end up in Chase Manhattan and, uh, and Morgan Guarantee Trust to finance uh, propaganda machines for what we refer to as uh, Zionist uh, propaganda for New World Order. And so Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for talking about Jehovah's New World. It's not Jesus' New World. It's Jehovah's New World. Jehovah is a... Is a one of the names of uh, the Hebrew God that we use today. So the original Watchtower magazine, originally back in 1870s, 1869, 1870, when Charles Tez Russell began to publish the Watchtower Society, uh, published the Watchtower magazine, it was not called Christian's Watchtower or Jesus' Watchtower. It was called Zion's Watchtower, Z-I-O-N-S, Zion's Watchtower. And 
and there were pictures in the old original Zion's Watchtowers, of which I had the complete set from the 1870s, the pictures in those Zion's Watchtowers of Charles Tez Russell, the founder, uh, on board ship with Baron the Philippi de Rothschild, Baron von Hurst, Chien Weissman, the founders of the Zionist movement. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was very well known that uh, that the International Bible Students, that's what they were called, they weren't called Jehovah's Witnesses back then. That didn't come until 1939. Originally, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses were referred to as the IBSA, International Bible Students Association. And uh, the public, and as I said, the Watchtower had pictures of Charles Tez Russell on board uh, large ships uh, going back to England. And it, and it shows him with all of these big shots, uh, and it says in the article, he was there with the Zionist leaders going back to England to meet with Lord Rothschild and the uh, and the Prime Minister of England, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, that just tells me that he is well connected to the uh, the secret order of the uh, of the movements of the world that have brought about what we call the new world order, because that's what he was talking about, the new world order. And so even today. Uh, the Watchtower talks about the coming new world where Jehovah will be the uh, the uh, absolute monarch of this new world order. And so Jehovah has nothing to do with uh, Christianity uh, as it was originally understood in the first century. This is Zionism. This is a this is a actually a Jewish Zionist uh, front group that's being financed by the Rockefeller Banks in Chase Manhattan and Morgan Guarantee Trust out of England. Was so it, that's, was that's it, just the beginning. Was <clears throat> it founded to fulfill that purpose, or did it actually have a very genuine beginning and then get co-opted? <clears throat> hard to say. I think probably uh, that's really hard to say because it is a good question. Um I'm not really sure at this point. All I know is that, I'll, well, let me let me go back and say this. In 1940, I think it was 1940 or 39, the ambassador to the United States from Italy, the Italian ambassador to the U.S. back in 1940, um, his wife uh, wrote a, uh, a chart. She wrote up a chart, and it was published in certain magazines about the occult, uh, occult connections with all the secret societies. And she was obviously very, very knowledgeable. And, uh, and it became a very widespread article. <clears throat> uh, and, and I have found a copy of it a long time ago. There's a company I know that I gave it to that are, are publishing it today. Um, and I can send you a copy of it if you'd like to get it. And it's, it shows the connections going all the way back to the mid-1800s, the secret societies operating behind the communist movement, behind the Nazi movements, the secret fraternal orders that were financing uh, and promoting Nazism, communism, fascism. And this lady was very interesting because she, she names all the names and their connections and all the interlocking uh, you know, corporations, who's financing who. And on that, uh, and in that uh, uh, chart, she has uh, Jehovah's Witnesses as being uh, originally founded by the Rothschilds and the Rockefeller Banks to be a front group to prepare uh, people for the idea, the very concept of an earthly kingdom a new world order earthly kingdom by God. And, of course, nobody would want to argue with that if it's by God. And so it was being financed out of Europe. And, uh, and of course, the Watchtower Society was very, very big in the 1870s in England and in the, uh, and, and the continent also. So I think probably, I mean, I'm giving, uh, I'm giving Charles Tess Russell the benefit of the doubt. Maybe at the very, very beginning uh, he was truly interested in Christianity, but uh, from the very start of his very beginning of his watchtowers, it was called Zion's Watchtower, and we're told that he was being financed. I mean, that's a whole 
another story about uh, about where he got his money from to start the uh, International Bible Students Association, which became later on Jehovah's Witnesses. There's a lot of history uh, to the Watchtower Society that's never been exposed to the public. And I've known about this for many, many years. How have they managed to keep all of this financing and everything from their flocks? I mean, I gather they don't talk accountancy during sermons. No, no, not at all. Not at all. <clears throat> this, that kind of thing is on a need-to-know basis. Well, my, and you don't need to know. <laughs> my next question is, uh, what happens to the people in the congregation that start asking too many questions? Well, that's what happened to me, because I, for some reason I started... I, once I became an elder, I began to, I, I, you know, I was very connected, as Santos was. But I began seeing things and hearing things that uh, didn't add up. And I was very sincere and wanting to do <clears throat> something uh, for, for God. But the more I began looking at it, the words and the terms that I was seeing that was being used by Jehovah's Witnesses, I knew to be communist terms. I knew them to be uh, occult Masonic terms. I've, I've already, I had already been studying for many years occultism, and I was very familiar with the secret societies, their fraternal uh, symbols, emblems of power, <clears throat> and the words and terms that they use. And when I began uh, seeing it, because that's what I've always been able to do is pattern recognition. And I began seeing a pattern, the, the symbols in the watchtower, the words and the terms, and in the big uh, 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 conventions, and big conventions that they had, the words and the terms that the speakers would use, I, I, I remember distinctly thinking, those are communist terms. Those are terms which are used by the secret societies in Germany and in Italy. Those are... Those are these symbols and words and pictures that are being shown to the Jehovah's Witnesses, these are well-known symbols and words of the secret societies, uh, the, 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 of, out of which has come Zionism, Illuminati, uh, you know, occult Freemasonry of Europe. So uh, it became very obvious to me something is going on here. Nothing is what it should be. And then I began seeing the corruption in the congregations, then in the uh, in the circuits, and then later on in the districts, and the higher you go, the more the corruption. And then I had some real eye openings uh, later on as I began to investigate. I really started to see things that were actually happening. We could talk about that later. But it all became overwhelmingly obvious to me that we were sucked into. Uh, some kind of a secret society operation that's being financed out of London and New York, and it's out and it's and it's based in uh, in Brooklyn. And Brooklyn, everybody knows, is the home of of mafia, Lucuzo Nostra, secret societies, Jewish Zionism, all kinds of evil corruption. Anybody could go on the web and look at the history of Brooklyn. It is nothing but criminal. And there is the Watchtower Bible Tract Society, <laughs> right in the middle of Brooklyn, buying up docks, buying up properties, doing anything they want to do. Even the mafia couldn't buy uh, the docks of Brooklyn, as, as, as well established in Brooklyn as they were. Even the mafia could not buy the docks of Brooklyn. Nobody could do that. Jehovah's Witnesses did. They went in and bought up whole sections of the docks of New York. That takes clout. You got to know somebody to pull that one off. So it's a big story. A blank, a blank a lot check more to talk about. A blank checkbook might help with that kind of negotiation. Uh, I, was th <laughs> I was thinking yeah. about um, how how there's many different roads to the same truth, and yep. what you've been explaining to me about the apparatus, the financing, the generalized sort of scope of the organization, which is basically just a subtle way of ushering people towards acceptance of a, uh, a new form of uh, global governance. 
Yes, and yes. this mirrors the founding of many political organizations that I've that I've been looking into, many other religious organizations, and so on and so forth. So, what it says to me is that this uh, uh, secret society network has actually managed to, uh, shall we say, set up so many different well-financed movements that it doesn't matter where you're born or what part of the world or something, their influence will probably be there uh, ushering you into the mindset to accept a new world order by hook or by crook, by politics, by religion, by food or by water. You can bet on it. No doubts about it. How do you exactly think about uh, what role the Jehovah's Witnesses organization themselves plays in this? I heard uh, tell of a story where they would buy sections of the neighborhood and uh, l- not let anybody live in the homes and uh, uh, like let them go out or something, or even sometimes uh, commercial buildings. And as a result of having this deteriorating, rotting building in the middle of that street, the value of the subsequent properties around it would start to go down, and they would come in and buy those too. And 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 it's yeah. the exact same thing that the um, the Russian uh, mob was doing in um, oh, in the Netherlands actually, about, about 10, 15 years ago. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, have you noticed that the exact same pattern of behavior exists throughout all these organizations? That's how you know they're connected? That's exactly right. That's what I said. Uh, you should see this chart. It's a large, large chart with hundreds of entries, and, and it shows the, the financing, the uh, political connections behind the scenes with the secret societies, uh, the different names and the different organizations and how they are interchangeable on different boards of directorship for corporations. You know, the same people that are on the uh, on the board of directors for, say, uh, Ford Motor Company are also on the board of directors for some companies in Europe, which are also on the board of directors for something in Russia and China. So it's an interlocking worldwide operation that uh, people have no idea in the world how big this stuff really is. But Jehovah's Witnesses are heavily, heavily involved as a corporation, not the people. But as a corporation, they are actually the uh, one of the many, uh, I guess you would call propaganda machines, to prepare the world to start thinking in terms of a kingdom to come, God's kingdom to be to come on the earth. And it will be, of course, a Jewish kingdom because Jehovah is the God of the Jews. So it's Jehovah's kingdom, not Jesus' kingdom, not God's kingdom. It's Jehovah's kingdom. And they talk about the coming day when the new world order will be here and that all of the great saints of, uh, of Jehovah, all the great followers of Jehovah will finally be in power. They will be in positions of power to govern over the earth. 144,000 will be in heaven and all the others will be here on the earth to govern the whole human race. So, you know, I I don't know how much you have to hear of this to finally get the idea that this whole operation of Jehovah's Witnesses and, and, uh, and other cults like them that are financed out of New York and London and are definitely can be proven to be connected to the Rothschild banking fraternities, uh, to the United Nations behind the scenes. Uh, All of this portends to tell you that something very big is going on on the world scene, and good people all over the world are being sucked into it because most good people are not into studying the dark side of the occult which I have been doing for some 50 years now, looking at the dark side. I want to hear the rest of the story. And believe me, there's a hell of a story here that's never been told about uh, not just Jehovah's Witnesses, we're talking about them tonight, but same thing goes for the Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, Christadelphians, Worldwide Church of God. Uh, There's a whole network of secret societies going around the world that are financing these uh, so-called York Rite 
uh, religious orders. So, so many of these religions are being financed for political purposes. So the financiers figured out that not everybody's going to just swallow one religion pill. So they brought out the exact. So they brought out the exact same poison pill with a whole bunch of different range of flavors, and uh, everywhere. That's it. You know, they've got your Coke, you've got your Fanta, you've got your Pepsi, you've got your Sprite, you've got you've got everything that you've got except real choice. That's it. You've got it. That's exactly what I think is happening. And I've only been looking at this for 54 years, and that's exactly what I would say. Yeah. Well, it sounds about right, doesn't it? Um, my, it sure does. I don't buy into fear porn anymore, you know, or getting afraid of things. I just assume that the worst possible option is probably the correct one, the most cynical option, the most jaded option, you know, something that a, that a really, really cynical journalist would say. Uh, that's probably <laughs> more likely the truth than uh, the other thing, because it's not satisfying. And that's why lies sound so sweet. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I, I take the same view of the life I live and the world I live in. Uh, I have discovered over the years, been been doing this for many, many years, that uh, the world, and I, I'm famous for saying this, that the world is not what you think it is. Nothing operates the way you think it does. Nothing. It's corrupt all the way through, all the way, like the... There was a scripture in the Bible that even says that um, from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, there's not a well spot in you. There's nothing in this world of any intrinsic, uh, real value in the world that we live in. Politics, religion, government, banking, law, go down the line. All the human institutions that were created by humans are created by fallible people. And it's in the nature of man to uh, to want to control and buy out and be in control. And unfortunately, we're reaching now a point on the earth where that is now, that cancer of control and buying and corruption has finally, finally sucked in the whole world. So that all over the earth, there is not a one thing that isn't the dirty, controlled, some kind of secret stuff that's going on that we, we're not being told and the normal everyday people of the world have no idea in the world how bad off we really are because people tend to panic and change for the better when they're faced with a crisis don't they you can't really uh, uh, allow people to react like that on their own fashion on their own steam could you imagine <laughs> it I mean, just right after 9-11, people weren't saying, oh, it was the terrorists, let's go over and bomb a whole bunch of people that had nothing to do with it and occupy their countries for a couple of decades. People would have gone, oh, yeah, all right. And <laughs> just like they did anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's so much more, so much more I could tell you, and uh, I don't want to block out Santos because he knows what I'm talking about. And uh, But there's so much more we could talk about. Speaking of which, it's, it's, it's time for the return of the ghost of Santos Bonacci. Welcome back, bro. <laughs> oh, no. It's not working very well. Santos. Yeah, thanks, Carl. I was enjoying that because uh, I can... What's that, the mic? Oh, it seems to be like close to something. There's a Hello? little bit of a hum or a blur or something, and, and you seem to have like a massive delay, like about a... a, a maybe I'd, I'd say a 10-second 10, 10 delay. So as soon as I finish speaking, you're going <laughs> to like, talk back up. Oh, well, look, I'll just, um, I'll just keep going for a little bit, wind up for about five minutes. But uh, I want to touch on a few of the good things that uh, Jordan mentioned. Uh, for the listeners, um, just Google Lord Edmund Aaron Rothschild and Charles Taze Russell and punch in the word letters and correspondence. And you'll see how the Russell family, who are just uh, branches of the Rothschild and the Rockefeller family, um, these are all ancient, ancient bloodlines. Very powerful. They are bloodline families. You might want to look at the uh, research of guys like Springmeyer and... Um, I look, there's tens of others who have researched these uh, so-called uh, royal bloodlines, right? The Russell family, who uh, emanate from um, to uh, Germany, Russell. They were, um, <coughs> and then migrated to Scotland and uh, England, then went over to the United States. 
These uh, Russells, they tie in with the Russell Trust, which is Skull and Bones, a la George Bush, and that killing machine there. Um, now, in um, 1935, there was a magazine at a register called Niles Weekly Register. I'm going to read this out to show what's behind, what kind of force is behind these uh, church corporations, monotheistic, patriarchal, autocratic, um, pedophile. I mean, these corporate Christian churches are the last haven for pedophiles on the planet. If you want to be a good little pedophile, and you want to be protected, join one of these churches. It'll be good. You'll be right. Because they that's all they do, including the Jehovah's Witnesses. Go to silentlambs.org and see the photographs and list of elders and ministerial servants and, and all types of deviants from the Jehovah's Witnesses, proven, went to court, and are still serving in the... Um, in the church, and this is a list of thousands upon thousands. It's it's riddled with pedophilia. All of these organisations are the big boys clubs. So, pedophilia is exactly what their interest is. Uh, but going back to the Niles Weekly Register, 1835, this was written about the Rothschild family. Now, remember, it was only eight years prior to this uh, um, that um, cut Charles. Rothschild down in Naples uh, went up to Rome and kissed this is famous, this picture you'll see a picture of uh, Carlo Rothschild bending down in bended knee and kissing um, the, the Pope of the time, I forget which one it was but it was 18 since 1826 I think it is, the Rothschilds and the Vatican have joined forces the richest family on the planet who branch out to the Russell family, uh, the Rock fellows, and all these other families as Rothschild interbred family. The Windsors are in with them too. Uh, and uh, they're a killing machine. They're a, they're a, they're a war family. Uh, uh, in fact, the Baroness uh, Rothschild, the, uh, the original family, didn't mother, wife, and um, we've, we've, we've been having a little bit of a, a problem here uh, hearing you. Uh, do you have a uh, phone number or something you can pop into the chat and we could possibly reconnect you on, on, on that, on a mobile or a landline or something? Uh, I'll call back in. No, I haven't got any other means. I'll just call back in. Uh, no problem, no problem. Just quickly uh, reconnect on in. That'll be fine. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties, folks. It's one of those things with live radio, isn't it? <laughs> Um, I would also like to um, have a look here and, and think about these uh, royal family connections uh, to, to these organisations as well, because uh, Santos, you were just saying there about uh, the Windsors uh, being connected to the to the setup of this. Oh yes, of course. Um, uh, Diana, um, Prince William is a half Rothschild. Um, the Spencers, they were uh, Goldsbergs. Who are a branch of the, um, the 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 Rothschilds? So this this family does this. It branches out uh, with different names, and they're all inter um, interrelated. Especially the Rus the Russells. Um, that's um, easily to, easy to research on the net. Uh, but the Niles Weekly Registered said this: the Rothschilds are the wonders of modern banking. We see the descendants of Judah. After a persecution of 2,000 years, peering above the kings, rising higher than emperors, and holding a hole in the hollow of their hands, the Rothschilds govern a, a Christian world. Now, I'll read that again because this is the point, this is what I wanted to read, but I'm going to continue with the, the full um, reading here, but I want to stop and, and just repeat that. The Rothschilds govern a Christian world. Not a cabinet moves without their advice. They stretch their hand with equal ease from Petersburg to Vienna, from Vienna to Paris, from Paris to London, from London to Washington. Baron Rothschild, the head of the house, is the true king of Judah, the prince of captivity. Please take note, the prince of captivity. The captivity is through the Vatican. 
and I'll explain how that is through the birth certificate and the legal name. This is what they're all doing. All the churches are involved in slavery. The Messiah so long looked by this extraordinary people. He holds the keys of peace or war, blessing or curse. They are the brokers and counsellors of the kings of Europe and the Republican chiefs of America. What more can they desire? Now remember, this is, this is just perhaps 50 years after um, the Rothschilds took over all banking in Europe and all the finances of Europe everywhere. And um, Baroness Rothschild said, if my sons did not want wars, there would be no wars. Now, this is what the churches uh, are here for, Vinnie. The, the churches, the Jehovah's Witnesses, all of them, they're all corporations and they, they're all uh, owners of corporations that make military hardware. The Jehovah's Witnesses own a corporation called Rand Can Corporations, which manufactures motors for the uh, military industrial complex. And it's, um, it's a... Uh, Judeo-Christian, you could call it, uh, monotheistic, uh, really it's just a, a, a corporation, okay? So the reason um, the Rothschilds joined with the Vatican was so that they could join forces and manufacture the greatest slave industry machine ever in the history of the universe. And it runs via the birth certificate legal name. Um, this is what the Jehovah's Witnesses are harvesting and all the other churches, they are harvesting the energy that is accessed through the birth certificate legal name. The birth certificate is nothing other than a baptism into the Catholic Church. It is a benefice. It is a benefice which is given in gift to a parson, P-A-R-S-O-N, which becomes a person, a mask, a legal Mask. Now, how many Jehovah's Witnesses do you think would go to their kingdom hall, kingdom phallus, and hear the elders saying, please, people, um, brothers and sisters, please understand that your legal name is owned by the Catholic Church and you are truly 100% owned, mind, body and soul, by the Catholic Church. I wonder how many Watchtower articles, uh, did I say Watchtower? I should have said uh, Watch Out articles have been written to warn them about this. I wonder how many articles in the Awake, I mean Asleep magazine, uh, that uh, they have warn their little baptised that the Vatican owns uh, their birth certificate. Santos, you're going to have to uh, reconnect qu uh, quickly again. Sorry about that. It kind of it seems to go good for a couple of minutes and then sort of uh, drop out, so time to reconnect. And we should be able to sort that out. Now, um, what this strikes me as, interestingly enough, is basically like ancient Aztec culture was about grabbing people, enslaving them, and then sacrificing yeah, them, yeah. right, and, man and, and manipulating them. This is the ancient Aztec way. And I think over time they've figured out, hey, you know what? Human sacrifice needs to be a lot more elaborate and convoluted so that people don't know that we're stealing their soul. Is that about right, yeah. Santos? Yeah, it is, Vinny. It is absolutely 100% correct. That's what the Jehovah's Witnesses are guilty of. The other thing they are guilty of, not only is uh, people trafficking and uh, harvesting energy and dumbing down the people so that they will wait for Jehovah to come and fix up the problems. In the meantime, bend over, pay your taxes, pay your rates to the military-industrial complex because they will come sodomizing you and we will encourage you to look the other way and not say anything. What's going on is these churches are funded by the Rothschilds, by the Rockefellers, the Petro... the um, the people who are dumping um, uh, byproducts of the oil industry in our water, air, foods, and it's just a big oil dump. It's the Rockefellers, and they own the Jehovah's Witnesses. And the, the, the way you know that the Jehovah's Witnesses are guilty, they're guilty of two of the biggest people trafficking crimes that you could possibly ever commit. First of all, slavery, because they have not told their idiot dupes that... 
they are owned through the legal name and the baptism, the birth certificate. It's not a government document. The live born record is the birth certificate is Vatican, Holy See, Roman Courier owned and their souls are owned. And do they tell their dupes as well that the currency that they're collecting in their contribution boxes and their donation boxes, which are everywhere, um, is um, owned by the Federal Reserve, a private banking cartel which is run by the Rothschilds and the Vatican, and they are collecting this blood money. They're not collecting treasury notes. Does the governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses ask their sheeple to make sure that they only collect treasury notes because treasury notes, do, US treasury notes, do not uh, subscribe and use usury? Isn't it interesting that the very people who, you know, preach the Bible and go killing you for it because you don't understand their version of their Jesus are telling people to put usury, blood money, military, industrial, Rothschild, Vatican-owned currency in their contribution boxes. I wonder what they're doing with that um, petrodollar money, the Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, Jordan just mentioned that, didn't he? Uh, buying up docks and land and hotels in the Brooklyn. Um, 20 years ago, when I started researching this, I discovered that um, there's an organisation there, a... Um, government organization which tells you the uh, the richest corporations in the boroughs of uh, New York and Jehovah's Witnesses are uh, number 20 in the Brooklyn borough, 20th richest business in the borough. And perhaps, uh, Jordan, you'd like to tell people about uh, Mr. Solly, the Jewish uh, cigar smoking gentleman who hides behind the curtains of the governing body to uh, direct to them what they shall um, brainwash with. That's uh, something I was going to bring up, yes, and uh, I was at a convention, uh, a big international convention here in Los Angeles, they hold a lot of them here, and uh, this was at the Dodger Stadium, and uh, I was in charge of platform security, or I was working with the group for platform security, so I had access to the uh, to the big shots up at the uh, top of the stadium overlooking the uh, the whole uh, the whole convention and I went in one uh, one day to talk to uh, Franz to Fred Franz the president of the Watchtower Bible Track Society and I was supposed to be uh, guarding him I was on the um, platform security so I walked in to the uh, to the box at the uh, at the stadium where it's very off limits for everybody. Just the big shots from New York had this private box, air conditioning, and and uh, you know catered food and everything in in the in the box. And so I, w I went in and I started to go into uh, uh, Fred Franz, as I said, the president of the Watch Hour Society. He knew me and I knew him well, and I was on his uh, you know I was on platform security. So I started to walk in. And there's a big, heavy-set Jewish guy there with sideburns smoking a cigar, which, as far as I was concerned, that the moment I saw him, he's sitting there smoking a cigar, uh, reading something, and I, I and it struck me, why, who is this guy smoking a cigar when it's that's supposedly something that Jehovah's Witness have nothing to do with is smoking, and yet this guy's sitting here in front of the uh, the, the, the 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 president of the Watch our society's office sitting there smoking a cigar. Well, let's get into that. After the break, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave you on the cliffhanger of the cigar smoking guy with sideburns. This, should, this, this is going to be really awesome. I can just tell already. We'll be right back. And welcome back to hour number two of the fastest two hours in talk radio. It's the Vinny Eastwood Show. I don't know what it, what it is about uh, being from New Zealand and broadcasting in America that just happens to be really awesome because I can criticize everything that's going on over there and not actually have to deal with it personally. <laughs> I haven't had my, my my blood pulled at a checkpoint on the side of the road. I haven't had a, uh, a, a corrupt New York cop beat me over the head for absolutely no reason and then, and then go in uh, afterwards to complain and then get arrested for complaining by a corrupt cop. <laughs> 
protecting the other one. <laughs> you know, it's it's kind of like a it's a really really messed up merry-go-round of power and hierarchical brainwashing scumbaggery out there, isn't it? Isn't it? And and it's and it's all you can do to try and just have a few laughs. You know, just squeak. You know, when you're down to the last of your tube of toothpaste, and you, you're like, bro, there's got to be just enough to brush my teeth just this once. That's what it's like trying to squeeze humour out of reality these days. Things are so bad that you have to do it as a survival mechanism. The same reason why people lie to themselves instead of admitting that they've been living a lie and continue to attack people who challenge that lie that they've been living. The truth is a bitter pill, but lies will always retain their sweet, juicy flavour even though it's completely artificially made. There's nothing natural about it. My very special guests are Santos Bonacci from UniversalTruthSchool.com and Jordan Maxwell from JordanMaxwellShow.com. It's good to hear you back on the air as well, Jordan. There's been a, uh, ever since that fire that uh, took out all of your possessions and, and, and everything uh, back in the day, it's been, uh, it's been tough, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I had a fire in which I what little bit of, of possessions I was able to hold on to. I've been robbed uh, more than one time, and so uh, the few things I had left to uh, I, I put them in a into a uh, storage. And um, when I was supposed to be de- when they were supposed to be delivered to me. They called me the morning and said, well, the storage area that your stuff was in burned to the ground. So your stuff was completely lost. And so I know that that was not by chance. Never been a fire there before. It wasn't in the whole the whole place was caught fire. No, just that little area where my stuff was, uh, you know, caught fire. And so I lost everything. Well, I know that it was purposely done, and I'm pretty sure I know who did it. But the, the but that and two bucks to get you a cup of coffee, I, I can't prove it. And besides the, uh, the the powers that be, it doesn't matter. At least I, I still have my life. They'd like to get rid of me, not just my stuff, but to get rid of me. And so, uh, uh, yeah, it's been very difficult. But it was being it was even difficult before losing everything, you know, because I've been robbed by people continually uh you know my, my website was robbed from me taken from me all my products were was stolen from me my money my bank account it's all been stolen from me and i've been left with nothing for many years so hate to correct uh, you jordan uh but i just got contacted by uh, max egan in australia uh, uh, and one of his listeners has actually managed to recover a portion of your website and they want to return it to you well, I thank you. Uh, I, I yes, and that, that's wonderful because um, because ultimately uh, I would like to get my website back that was stolen from me and uh, get it all back online again. And so ultimately, that's what's going to have to happen. I've got to get it all back again. Um, right now, I do have a website. It's called Jordan Maxwell Show. S H O W. JordanMaxwellShow.com, and that's a little, it's just a, a, a podcast, but I'm going to be doing a lot more with that website soon, but I'm in court right now. I'm in court with a, a state case, and we got a federal case going against the people who have stolen my website, my money, and everything I ever worked for. It's all been stolen by these people, and they're making nothing but money off of me, and for four years, I've gotten nothing, and so... Uh, but they're, they're, it's, they're, their time in the barrel is coming very soon. We've got a federal case now looking at them and a state case looking at them. So uh, I'm sure that somewhere along the line uh, there's going to be some justice done finally for me after all these years of people robbing me. But, yeah, like you said, yeah, it caught fire and I, and I lost everything. So at this point I just throw my hands up and say, well, I just do the best I can with, with, you know, with what I have to work with. Well, at the very so, at the very least, all of the stuff is uh, is still out there. Is your original uh, stolen website still up at least, so people can go and access the knowledge that has been put into it? 
Well, yeah. I mean, you, I would prefer you go to my website because if people go to the website, uh, the original website, which was stolen from me, uh, they have really destroyed that website. The people who stole it from me have really destroyed it. They have gone in, changed everything, mocked me um, and called me names on my own website, mocked me and mocked my name and uh, and uh, libeled my name. And at the same time, they are libeling my name and calling me everything they can imagine. Uh, at the same time, they're trying to sell all my products, which is uh, which is you know, on the, on the surface is crazy because they're you know, they're, they're calling me names on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, destroying my name and my reputation. At the same time, promoting all of my videos to make money. These people are criminals. They're mentally disordered. And uh, eventually, uh, I'm going to see them in federal court. They've got some serious court days coming up. Somebody is going to have to pay for what they've done to me for the past four and a half years. So I would stay away from my original website, which is jordanmaxwell.com. I don't own that anymore. They stole it from me. And so uh, Jordan, if you want to you know, go to my website, which is jordanmaxwellshow.com. Yeah, and um, for the listeners, please, um, I know exactly who it is that's uh, stolen uh, Jordan's uh, property, and um, I know it's a family of three criminals, and uh, please write to me, get in touch with me, um, and I will post on Facebook and uh, my uh, Face Uni website how to deal with this uh, particular family of criminals and uh, how we can stop them in their tracks. So write to me and I'll uh, share that with you. So um, we'll uh, deal with the corruption as we come to it. It would be great if there was also a questionnaire or a, a flowchart like that and how to deal with the Bush fa uh, crime family as well. But unfortunately, <laughs> they're holding yeah, the bag right. with all the good yeah. heroin in it, so they've got enough money right. for any amount of black ops they need. <clears throat> this is the problem. And the also, I would, let me add this. Is that if you go on my website to jordanmaxwellshow.com, you will see a red box on the right-hand side. Click on that red box. And it will take you to a page where all of the legal and lawful stuff going on with me, all the court, what the courts have said, what the judges have said, what the attorneys have said, what's been happening to me for over four and a half years. It's all there with the links going to the court records, to the attorney's uh, offices. It's all there. We finally got it all out so that the public can see what these people have done to me for four and a half years. Criminals, felonies. Mm -hmm. These people are criminals with felony convictions already, and they're getting ready to have a few more felony convictions sent to them real soon. So go on my website and click on that red box, and it will take you to a page that you can read all about these criminals. I got their pictures there. And what they've done, what the courts have said, as I said, and what the uh, and what the attorneys are saying in the lawsuit, it's all right there if you care to look to see what has happened to me. Psychopaths only fear two things, ladies and gentlemen: exposure and worse psychopaths. <laughs> no, that's true. They are. They are psychopaths, no doubt about it. They're criminals. They've got a long criminal record that people don't know about. But I've had a private investigator do a, uh, an investigation through the FBI and Homeland Security, and the, and the stuff he came up with, he wrote me, the pri private investigator said, be wary of these people. These are real criminals. You've got to watch these people. They're violent, and they're very, very well-known criminals. So uh, all of that I'm going to have on my website. So just and, go read about it on jordanmaxwellshow.com. And they're probably also very charming and manipulative and will tell you everything you wished every, somebody would come up and tell you. All your dreams will come true. All your problems will be solved. And it's just a little facade to say, you know what, if you trust me enough, I can take everything from you. And it's the exact exactly same right. kind of power play that happens all, all the time, isn't it? Uh, the, these exactly right. these these creatures can't create anything of their own. So if they see something that they like, a good idea or a body of work or something, they know they could never come up with it. So they're forced to steal it and then just say that they came up with it and poo-poo uh, the person who actually did and uh, hope, that they, right. hope that they go away. That's exactly right. And they not only stole my website, 
and then redirected my bank account to their personal bank account. So when people buy tapes and videos and books and stuff off of that website, it goes directly to their personal bank account, not to the business. And then they redirected my emails. Four and a half years ago, they redirected my email. I don't know anything about it. They were my webmaster. So they redirected my emails to themselves. So for the past four and a half years, people have been writing to me from all over the world, sending donations to me from all over the world. And they answer my emails all over the world as if it was me. And so I'm getting people now who found out that I have a new uh, a, a website that is mine, and they're telling me, well, we've been sending money to support you. We've been sending stuff to help you and been talking you know, and emailing you for four years, and now we find out that it's been going to these people, these criminals. And I said, yes, there's nothing I can do about it because I don't have the money to protect myself. I don't have the funds to, to get a lawyer and to protect myself. They stole it all. They stole my products, my name, my money, my email account. They took it all. Then they went into Washington, D.C., sent in an affidavit under penalty of perjury to say that they own, uh, that they wanted not only the copyrights of everything, which they got. All my work has been copyrighted by these people, so I don't even own my own work anymore. Then they tried to trademark my name, so I can't even use my name in public. And so that tells you that these people are criminals personified. And so something has to be done. Well, happily, some lawyers came in, saw what was happening to me. These guys are very good. So they said, we're going to do something about this. I told them, I don't have any money to pay anybody. They said, that's all right. We're going to do it anyway. So uh, I think that uh, their days are, are numbered now because we've already got a federal case uh, facing them and a state case facing them. And these people, I am sure, hopefully, they're going to prison. They're going to jail because they have broke so many federal laws now by impersonating wire fraud, mail fraud, accepting money behind the scenes and putting it into private accounts. These people are dangerous criminals. So that's why I said don't go to anywhere. Don't go anywhere near jordanmaxwell.com now my, my my worst enemies have stolen it from me now in the end everything comes back to the beginning and the, the show originally started out uh, talking about the jehovah's witnesses and you said something there jordan yep. that made me think about myself uh, or that made me think um you don't have the money to protect yourself from these people and i was just thinking you large money laden organizations uh, the 20th most uh, rich in the borough, uh, as it were, in Brooklyn, the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, have more than enough funds uh, to protect themselves. So the the question is, uh, are they actually doing things that are like against the law and then getting away with it because they can hire the good lawyers or bribe the cops, etc., et anything like that? Well, they don't need to do anything illegal. Uh, like uh, like Santos said, they've got an open check. Like I told you, they got an open check from two of the largest financial institutions in this country. So with enough money, you don't have to do anything illegal. You can just go in and buy it. Period. Make them an offer they can't refuse. And so uh, is that sort they of probably the, sort of the same way how uh, a number of corporate banks financed the both candidates in the 2008 election, but they just financed Barack Obama twice as much as the other guy. That's exactly right. Yeah. If you got that kind of money, uh, you don't have to be illegal or, or you know, do anything criminal. Just buy it and buy this off is, everybody. Buy off anybody that gets in your way. I mean, this is America, damn it. So. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way it works in America. <laughs> it's a business. America is a business. It's a corporation. A poor little immigrant yeah, like me. It's, it's a dream. It's a dream. Tell, well, us, like, tell us about uh, Solly, uh, Jordan. The man with the cigar. Yeah, I okay. cannot believe we got so tagentized on that. <laughs> Wait, well, is tagentized even a word? So, I don't know if tagentized okay, is even I'll a word, but go ahead. Story. Okay. So I, w I went in to see Fred Franz, who was the president of the, of the Watchtower and Bible Tract Society. And, uh, and I went in to see him, and this guy named Sully, sitting there smoking a cigar, 
he says to me, what are, where are you going? I said, I'm going into Fran's office. And he said, no, 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 you're not. And I said, why not? And he said, you talk to me. I talk to Fred Franz, not you. And I said, I have some business. He said, you got no business. You talk to me. I talk to Franz, not you. So whatever it is you want to tell Franz, you tell me. I'll talk to him. And I said, no, I, I don't understand. He said, well, try and understand this. I'm the boss here, not you. I call the shots, not you. So nobody talks to friends unless they talk to me first. So I said to him, well, who are you? He said, it's unimportant who I am. What is important is I'm the guy that you have to go through. So out of here. Turn around and leave the, leave the room. Oh so God. that told me something right then and there about Fred Friends, about the Watchtower Bible Tract Society, about the whole organization of Jehovah's Witnesses, because I've known for a long time a long time ago that they were connected to secret societies in Europe. I knew all about Charles Tess Russell and the Russell Foundation and the Russell family and their connection to uh, uh, Yale's uh, Skull and Bones. That was uh, the name of the guy who started Skull and Bones was a name, man named Russell. I know about Charles Tess Russell who founded the uh, organization that became known as Jehovah's Witnesses, about his financing out of London uh, on ships with the uh, with the leading Zionists going to England to meet Lord Rothschild. I knew all about that, and I knew about the corruption in New York, the Empire State and New York operation. I knew all about uh, 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 Brooklyn being the center of organized crime in America, period. And so I realized that there was a lot of dirt going on, but it finally, finally uh, hit me how far gone the whole thing really was when this Solek guy with his cigar uh, said, you know, nobody talks to friends unless they come through me, period. I call the shots. I'll decide what he hears and what he doesn't hear. So it sounds like Jesus. Something about nobody should come to the Father except through me. Yeah. It sounds almost well, like the it, Wizard of Oz, you know. Hey, nobody can talk yeah, yeah. to the Wizard. Not nobody. Not know how. <laughs> hey, hey, Jordan. Um, there's also uh, Fritz Springmeier in one of his uh, presentations. Uh -huh. He reveals he reveals uh, something very very similar about the Jehovah's Witnesses because I think he was involved with them as well. But yep. he mentions. Um, he mentions the name of a gentleman who comes in periodically. Um, it sounds like this Soleil guy, and he um, he instructs and, and gives them. Apparently, they all you know stop and give him a lot of time when he visits. And uh, he also has Zionist Jewish connections. So, Fritz uh, Springmeier. Maybe if uh, any of the listeners know how to contact contact him. Uh, I do. If they want to find out more about that, yeah, that would be very, very handy because I would like to know that because um, I wouldn't like I would like um, to uh, help the beautiful people that I know that are trapped in the Jehovah's Witness organization. I know thousands and thousands. I have my first uh, um, cousins involved with them. I ha you know, and they're suffering. I mean, it's not like they're happy. They are suffering because it's an organization that is is run by the mentality of um, gossip and um, uh, uh, sticky nose behaviour. You know, everybody's looking over their shoulders to see if they can uh, uh, tell on somebody, someone for doing the wrong thing. You know, Sister Smith's got a short dress, don't you think, Elder Jones? Uh, you know, that sort of... Uh, it's the Inquisition. It's purely... I mean, a lot of people will never fathom and grasp this, but what is going on in the Jehovah's Witness Church is the Catholic Inquisition. And I can, I mean, I can prove that because every single one of them has a Catholic state birth certificate with a legal name. And that legal name will read something like this, Santo Bonacci, right? That I... I do not have permission to use Santo Bonacci. That is not my name. And there is, there is, there's the banking controlled state 
is using that legal means to bind, legare in Latin. Legale is legal and legare with an R, both letters L and R are interchangeable, mean to bind. This is why the birth certificate is written on bond paper. It's binding you to an ecclesiastical system because the, the birth certificate is a Catholic benefit, benefice. It's a vestment, a garment, identifying the parson who has authority over Catholic property or relics. It's, it's, um, it's about Catholic property. And um, the birth certificate is a gift from the mother, the mother church, you see. That's how it's considered. And uh, it's, it's a Catholic benefice, so you get benefits from it, you see. So what I, would, what I would be encouraging one and all is to waive those benefits, otherwise you, sh you shall be inscribed in the book of death because it's, it's a corporate person name and corporate, it's corporatized. Corporate comes from corpse. This is all registrations. Regis belong to the king, Regis. And all registrations are registered and recorded in the book of death. And every single one of the Jehovah's Witnesses, bar none, has a registered birth certificate with a legal binding name, and they belong to the Catholic Church lock, stock, and barrel, hook, line, and sinker, spirit, soul and body until they deal with that legal name, the whore of Babylon. Now, you will never learn this in any of the corporate churches out there because they are dead. They're dead and they promote necromancy. And all people going to these so-called Christian churches are practicing necromancy and they are the dead who are burying the dead. Because to awaken from this death-like system and not to be uh, operating through a mask, through a person, a corporate name, owned by the Vatican. They are running dioceses, people. You see, it, our countries are, countries are just big farms run by the Rothschilds and the Rock Rockefeller Vatican slave business, people. And all the bar, all the police, all the, the um, politicians, they are all working for this slave military industrial complex petrodollar oil dumping scheme. They're dumping oil into your McDonald's burgers. They're dumping oil into uh, uh, petro uh, products into Kentucky Fried Chicken. They're putting it into your water. It's called sodium fluoride. They're putting it into your cherry ripe. It's called aspartame, E. coli feces. It's poo. They're, they're, they're pouring poo and oil sludge into our food, all the beryllium and aluminium and feces and blood plasma in the chemtrails because and through the churches and they're dumbing people down with petro dollars. Get a mortgage, get a debt, use the usury money, don't learn how to make your own money, which Santo Bonacci um, or Santos Bonacci created a promissory note and a bill of exchange and played, paid with lawful money, not legal, filthy Rothschild blood money. And that is what is churches are all about, dear friends. We need to go to the church that is in the heart, that the Apostle Paul speaks of in Colossians uh, 1, 26 and 27, of the Christ in you. Because there's only, there is the church within, the church in your heart, is the church that will never allow you to kill someone else because they do not have um, the same faith. And killing is not just restricted to, to destroying the body. It is restricted to the judgment that comes off the lips of all the churchgoers. The Presbyterian pedophiles are cursing the Jehovah's Witness pedophiles because they don't have the same Jesus. And the Methodists are persecuting the uh, Pentecostal Jesus and their uh, adherents equally. All of these churches, all of them, all corporate churches need to be and will be shut down. And then we will return to the true church of humanity and love, love of God and love of light and love of peace.
and no more petrol dollars that we are pocketing with blood dripping from them so that we can support these, um, you know, pedophile top-heavy churches and in particular the Vatican, absolutely rife with pedophilia. You know, the Pope says that he wants to do away with slavery. He wrote that in a couple of weeks ago in one of his letters. Well, he is sitting on the kingdom of the slave empire, the unholy Roman Inquisition of the birth, ch- the birth certificate legal name. Anything to do with it, guys, is rubbing shoulders with Babylon the Great. And I would say, get out of her, my people, if you do not want to share with her in her sins. And, ladies and gentlemen, if you want another avenue to get rid of your filthy Rothschild blood money, donate it to Vinnie Eastwood today at the VinnieEastwoodShow.com. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I had to get that in there somehow. You understand. Uh... Now, Jordan, go right ahead. I was going to say something else that um, I had another experience that Santos will find interesting. I was, I have been, as I said, I was uh, in charge of platform security. I've been to New York to the governing body headquarters. I had uh, lunch with uh, three of the members of the governing body. I was ushered around and given a private tour. By uh, by Dan Seelick and um, and some of the other guys on the governing body, and um, so I was always connected to platform security and to security for uh, the president of the Watchtower Society. Well, they had a big conference in uh, in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, I was uh, I was in charge of platform security at that event, and I sat with Fred Franz in the audience, and people, all the hundreds of people, thousands there, uh, you know, were looking at, wondering why I was able to sit with Fred Franz because he came out and sat in the audience uh, to to make people feel more at ease that the very president of the Watch Heart Society is sitting out in the audience with the people. And so uh, he, he had me go with him because I was helping him. I picked him up you know, to take him to the event, take him home to the hotel, etc. So I was sitting there with him, and he had a tape. He asked me, uh, he had a tape. He, could, he was very, uh, he was having problem seeing. He was very old and was not seeing too well. And he told me, I have a tape, a, a, a regular cassette tape. And he said, somebody, I, I messed it up because I can't see too well. And I screwed it up on the tape recorder. And he said, uh, can you fix this for me? And I told him, absolutely. That, I, I'm, I'm used to doing that, working with cassette tapes. So I told him, sure, I'll fix that for you. No problem at all. So he told me, well, wait till we get back out to the event. We get back into the office uh, at the stadium. So we went, we, when we got back to the office, he told me, he said, I want you to fix this in front of the other guys on the security staff. Uh, he said, I want you to fix this. And he told everybody, he said, Jordan Maxwell is going to fix my tape for me. And he said, I want everybody to understand nobody touches this tape. Uh, after it's fixed. So Jordan can sit here, but I have four or five guys sitting around watching me to fix it. And he said, nobody is to touch this tape. I only want one. I want this tape not to be recorded. I don't want anybody touching it. Just fix it and hand it back to me. So I did. I fixed it and give it back to him. And it was very, very high security kind of thing. Everybody was standing around watching me fix the tape. And the idea was, when this tape is fixed, you hand it back to the president of the society and forget it. It's over. Your, your part's done. And I wanted, I was wondering, I was really wondering, what is on this tape that, uh, that was scaring everybody and that the president made a big to-do over? And so when I fixed it. I handed it back to him. He said, thank you. And uh, he was happy with that. And then when he went back into his personal office, I was sitting out in the outside office with these guys. And I said, well, I said, well, what was that all about, the the tape? And and one of them just jokingly said, well, that's his marching orders. That's his marching orders. And I just thought that was interesting. That's his marching orders, which which is a way of saying that's his orders that he's been given 
by the higher authorities. And uh, he, he was trying to listen to it and screwed it up and needed to have it fixed. And that's why he was so anxious to get it fixed right so he could hear it. But for that guy, for that other guy saying this is his marching orders, uh, you wonder, wait a minute, who tells the president of the Watchtower Society, you know, and give him a tape and here's your orders. So uh, I don't know what's going on there, but it sure opens up a can of worms as far as I'm concerned. Are we talking about some people who, I, I, I guess, ha- have a, a general interest in this? I mean, we, we, let me rephrase. When you've got an organization like the Jehovah's Witnesses, and there's so many others uh, underneath this umbrella of, uh, let's say, uh, religion that teaches the New World Order uh, ideal, yeah. more, more or less, mm. uh, are there, is there a central puppet pulling all of those strings, the, the, the religious element of the uh, New World Order global brainwashing apparatus, or yes. are they all completely independent, uh, connected to, uh, in in vicarious ways, sort of thing. Well, I think that there is uh, there has to be logic alone for me tells me there has to be some kind of a clearing house so that you don't have uh, wrecks, you don't have uh, uh, traffic jams and wrecks going on. You've got to you know control the flow of traffic. So you've got to have red lights and green lights, and you've got to have uh, uh, you know, indicators. Uh, so that's true in business, that's true in commerce, that's true in everything to do with business. And after all, Jehovah's Witnesses and all these other big uh, organizations are a business. So I'm of the opinion that, no, I think that there's some sort of a, of a clearing house for this kind of knowledge. Somebody is, uh, is orchestrating what these different cults are teaching. Would or, we... You know, what, I, I, I'm just speculating here, but it would be a secret society that the Jehovah's Witnesses are connected to or something like that? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, there is some sort of a secret or society behind the scenes that are doing the thinking for Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, Christadelphians, Worldwide Church of God, some sort of an all-encompassing uh, place. We know that there that that's true of the major think tanks that are in England um, and in America that uh, are the brains behind political moves that uh, England and America are making. So we know that there's, uh, that there's this kind of thing exists in commerce and banking and government. And so obviously it's happening in religion too. There's Would some be- sort of a... Uh, clearing house freemasonry per- perhaps because because when you when you think about it, it it would have to be global there'd have to be a, a relatively large sphere of influence uh, members in pretty much every country uh and also a a, a good uh, system for keeping secrets secrets and and as high yep. a hierarchy as it goes in order to uh keep that kind of nougaty goodness right right at the top where it belongs with the tendrils of its scumbaggery well, yes, I would say I would say I don't think it's the Masonic order in America as such, but I would say that there is an occult, and that's a very important uh, addition to the to the sentence. Occult simply means hidden, and of that there is no doubt in my mind that there is an occult or hidden uh, societies in the world which uh, which are into into playing and interfacing with the uh, the different fraternal orders of the world. There are all kinds of fraternal orders in the world. But I am suspecting because of what I've seen and because of pattern recognition using the same, so many different uh, uh, cults and groups, uh, religious, uh, political, uh, financial organizations are using the same identical symbols, the same words, the same terms. They seem to have plenty of money. There's, so it tells me that there has to be some kind of a clearing house somewhere where the money is uh, allocated, the symbols and words and terms are, are put into place for different churches, different religions, different uh, banks and or organizations got to be some kind of a of a clearing house somewhere was, in the world that this stuff is being cooked up and, and, and guided from. 
I was told um, uh, once by somebody, and I, I didn't confirm this, I don't know if, it, if, if he was actually telling me the truth, but he, he said that a lot of the religions, like uh, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, and uh, Mormons, so forth, were all started by fr- uh, high-ranking Freemasons. Did you, did you hear anything to that effect? Yeah, I, I have, yeah, and that's, 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 that's probably something to that, yep. I, I hate yeah, sure. I don't. I don't want to jump on Freemasons as such, uh, especially in America, because. Oh, but but again, but again, so Jordan. Many. Sorry, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt. But if we're no. talking about Freemasons again, we're talking about the organization, not the people. The same context with which we refer to the Jehovah's Witnesses in this discussion. Right, right. That's exactly right. I don't want. I'm not talking about the the normal everyday guys you meet in the street that are that are members of the Masonic Order. The, yeah. uh, I have. Many, many friends that were good guys. So, but there does seem to be some sort of an overshadowing, as a term I like to use, an overshadowing presence on the earth that runs things from behind the scenes. And uh, I've been talking about that for 50 years. It's finally out there all over the world. People talking about Illuminati and secret societies and you know all the and especially important is the stuff that uh, santos has been talking about in relation to astro theology the vatican the corporate world that is actually incorporated under the vatican that's absolutely correct the vatican is a original corporation in europe and then the uh through the vatican corporation there are subsidiaries to that corporation in England, and then later on into America, into New York. <clears throat> Remember, uh, Rome, under the Caesars, when Rome went into Britannia, which we call the UK, but it was called Britannia, well, when Rome went into Britannia, uh, the, the, the uh, seat of power is the word I was looking for, the seat of power where the headquarters for the Roman uh, uh, the Roman uh, Empire in Britannia, in the UK, was in a city called York, Y-O-R-K, York, England. York, England is where Caesar ruled Britannia. And so when uh, the New World was being founded, uh, that same Catholic Roman uh, Caesar uh, domination of the UK, Roman Catholic, domination of the UK and York, England, moved to this continent and it became known as New York. And New York was called the Empire State. They have an Empire State building. So the Empire State is the Roman Empire operating in the New World. So that's why if you go back to the history books, and read about the, how the Roman Empire operated, it will tell you that uh, Caesar, in the ancient Roman Empire, Caesar ruled Rome from something called Capitoline Hill, or Capitol Hill. And how did he officially oversee the Roman Empire from Capitoline Hill? Capitol Hill was through the, was through the Roman Senate. And so uh, the history books will tell you so that Caesar every morning was said to go up on the hill. He went up on the hill to uh, to rule with the U.S. with the uh, Roman Senate. <clears throat> well, that's the same thing we have in America. We talk about every day on the news up on the hill. Uh, the Senate did this and that up on the hill. So we are America is a Roman Catholic Vatican. Uh, operation in uh, the New World, and what we call uh, the New World or North America. And of course so, a number, uh, if not almost <coughs> almost all the founding fathers uh, were, were big in Freemasonry as well too, weren't they? In fact, the well, uh, George, Washington's, were, George Washington's yep. uh, inauguration was uh, actually a Masonic ritual. He's wearing the white apron and the gloves. Yeah, but I also have uh, photocopies of, of letters that he wrote about his association with the Masonic Order, in which he said he talked about the Illuminati, which I thought was interesting. Actually, in those words, George Washington wrote <clears throat> to uh, a, a minister, clergyman, friend of his, and he talked to that clergyman about, quote, the Illuminati, end quote. So even George Washington used that term as far back as 1770. So, um, 
uh, he talked about how that there was no doubt in his mind that there were presence of of corrupt and evil organizations operating in America and operating within the U.S. government, but that he did not see that happening in Freemasonry himself, and he did not see that, uh, the, you know, he saw it as an apparition at that point. It was just a, a handful of people who were trying to overthrow the founding of America, uh, and they, he called them the Illuminati. Well, I just think that's interesting because I think he was right. I don't think it's right to attribute to all Freemasonry uh, that which is evil uh, that has crept into it. Because Freemasonry actually can be traced back to Egypt. And in the Egyptian Masonic, uh, what we would call the Masonic presence in Egypt, was based on astral theology, of which both uh, Santos and I have been talking about for years. Uh, so, I, And I know that today, this is a fact that most Christians have no idea of, that the Christian church in the world today is a Masonic order, period, in the sentence. You would have no Christianity on this earth if it were not for the Masonic orders of the world. Uh, Christianity is a Masonic movement, period. Now, once you understand how that, has, how that happened, then I would say not all of, 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 of Freemasonry is evil or bad. There were very good people in Freemasons who, who helped found America and give freedom to the world. So I think it has to do with the fact that people are people. And any time you have organizations come together, I don't care how far back they go, going back to Egypt, going back to India, there were secret societies, there's always going to be those who are evil <clears throat> who come in and try and and uh, redirect the, the, you know, the, the good work that uh, others want to do. You're right. So, uh, Alan Watt talked about this. He said that the, uh, the New World Order, for lack of a better term, has figured out a, a, a template, a, uh, a playbook, as, as it were, for identifying, corrupting, and then co-opting good movements. It doesn't matter, yeah, doesn't matter right. how, how well organized they are in order to uh, detect, they can always be infiltrated and taken from within. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And I've been in the company. <clears throat> I've been in the company of many good Masons, high up Masons, and they are, they are of the same mind that they are very unhappy about what's going on in the world today, very unhappy about what's happened to America. They're extremely unhappy about what the way the world is going. <clears throat> and they've been my friends for many years, and uh, and there's many of them. So I know it does, this does not apply to masonry across the board. But there is, in fact, occult Freemasonry, which has to do with something coming out of Europe, which is, can be traced back to, as, as Santos has shown so many times, can be traced back to Rome. It can be traced back to good people being taken over little by little by little, by sinister evil plots and sinister evil people with money who are manipulating the masses through these organizations. But I don't think Freemasonry as a, as a subject is, uh, is the culprit. I'm sure there's something far, far more evil behind all secret societies in the world. There's no doubt in my mind about that. The, I, saw, I saw a film once uh, called Hero, and the way that they protected the, um, uh, the emperor from uh, assassins was they didn't have any curtains in his great halls because once he did and there were so many curtains separating him from uh, from his attackers that he had no idea where they could possibly be coming from and i think that's the the way it needs to work basically if you want to maintain control of an ideal or an organization is just have oh so many curtains in the way to blind people from the truth and the light outside yep, that's exactly right behind the curtain just like in uh just like in the movie, what was it? The, um, <clears throat> the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, Wizard of Oz and the man behind the curtain. Santos, and, you've been uh, awfully quiet there. You yeah, know, uh, I was just thinking there, you, you, you can't really um, attribute uh, all of this uh, control mechanism that's gone way out of control to this this body or that body, um, you know, you've got to look at organisations like Tavistock, um, MI. That's right. Yes. Yeah, six and um, 
the uh, Bilderbergers, you've got to look at all of these, uh, Mossad, all of these mind control organizations. They're just, they're just organizations. They're used to protect the big corporation. Everything is to protect that corporate structure. And then, and then under that is the legal name and legal tender, which is fiat currency. You see, usury and harvesting of people's energy through the birth certificate. The, the unfortunate thing is that these organisations work hard. You can even go down to the you know, Lions Club, Apex Club, Salvation Army. I would be very, very suspect of these. And all of these you know, so-called charity foundations and wildlife protection this and wildlife protection that and cancer um, organisations. What, what are these... Um, Cancer councils. I mean, what do we need that for? I mean, it is known that there are natural cures for cancer. You know, people are curing themselves every day with this, that and the other natural cure. So why do we need unnatural uh, pharmaceutical treatments? Why, why would you treat an illness when you can cure it? You see, so this is what's going in this, this world. They're indoctrinating people to believe that one day the Messiah is coming. One day we'll find a, a, you know, a cure for cancer. One day, one day we'll have free energy. They're already here. We do not need Federal Reserve notes and in Australia Reserve Bank notes. We don't need them. We don't need their, their charitable organisations. We can look after the poor ourselves. We don't need their legal tender. We are banks. We create our own money. In fact, that's why we, we do give money to banks by giving them our signatures. We are the creators of money. It is we the people. We the people are the living de jure government. What's going on in these churches is they're hurting people in churches, continuing to um, compound their delusion by making them believe that they are the legal name and to do everything and operate everything through it and to only use one currency, that legal tender. The legal name and legal tender and that's how they have bound us and this is why they create bonds from the bonded birth certificate it's a bond market a slave market stock market we are the stock and they're laughing at us because we are the ones who are committing the crime of using a, a name which we have no permission to use it is catholic property Please, people, next time the Jehovah's Witnesses knock on your door, ask them, do, are you aware that your birth certificate name is Catholic-owned stock? It is their property. Every time you use it, you are committing fraud. You are committing what's called a sin, and they know that. That's how they get you to, um, to be a, a false witness against yourself so that you can give evidence against yourself in court and pay for their further bonds that they are, they are creating called constructive bonds, bid bonds, payment bonds, and these are all bo um, securitized and bundled and sold on the stock market for, well, the Rothschilds, the Rockefeller, the Russells, and all of their foundations and corporations and etc. and charitable organizations. It's all a crock. People, please let us wake up. Don't support businesses. That, that are polluting your bodies. Because if you eat formaldehyde and, and aspartame and all of those preservatives that they put in, in a Mars bar, your feces is just going to, it's never going to decompose. You're polluting the earth. You yourself are polluting the earth by polluting your body by eating polluted processed foods. Say no to them. Say yes to organic food. Insist that your local uh, producers stock only organic food and none of that Monsanto sprayed GMO poison which is causing so much uh, um, suffering among mankind you know and pharmaceuticals throw them away we've got coconut oil we've got um, uh, uh, cannabis oil we've got all of these cures cannabis, cannabis oil can cure in the right dosage cancer all kinds of cancer terminal cancer whatever kind in six weeks we don't need cancer councils. They're all run by the Rothschilds. They're all run by pedophiles. The Jehovah's Witnesses, governing body, mostly top-heavy with pedophiles, guys. They protect pedophiles. They are accomplices. They are guilty. They're all guilty. They're all of them. All of those corporate corpse dead entities. 
we have to say goodbye to the necromantic world and go back to the living de jure paradise of the Garden of Eden, which is de jure living, and take control of our uh, you know, self-determined governance that we, we have as godlike children of light. Don't so be ro- That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be <laughs> romanced by the necromancy. Santos, uh, yeah. there's something I wanted to bring up uh, that, that I think you might find interesting, uh, just in the, for, for a couple of minutes. You know, I've asked Jehovah's Witnesses many times, uh, we read in the old watchtowers, and it's generally understood among Jehovah's Witnesses, is that Charles Tez Russell was being led by Jehovah's Spirit. He was the one who was who was called out by Jehovah and was being led by Jehovah's Spirit to read and study and to research and to uh, and to seek the truth. And so that, that's what they've taught for many years, is that Charles S. Russell uh, was, was actually being led by Jehovah's Spirit. Am I not correct? Yep, that's what they say. Okay, then my next question is, they, they also, Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you, that when Jesus came back into his kingdom in 1914, he, uh, he came back to his kingdom. Uh, before 1914, Jesus was not in a position to do anything until he became king of the kingdom. And according to Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Jesus uh, came in and took up the reins of king of kings uh, in 1914. And at that time... The Watchtower Society has said that uh, Jesus, in 1914, sat down on the throne of God, and now he was in a position as King of Kings and Lord of Lords to decide who will be the chosen people that will serve Almighty God. And so the, the, the Watchtower has said so many times that uh, Jesus looked over the earth, looked all over the earth, and the only people he could find that were as close to the truth and sincere and was as close to the truth as possible were the International Bible Students Association, the IBSA, started by Charles S. Russell. So he picked them to be the Lord's uh, anointed ones and to give to them uh, you know, the, 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 the work of carrying the real truth because they have, been, they have been the closest to the truth as possible. And so he picked them. Well, my question was, wait a minute. I thought you said that Jehovah was, was, uh, was influencing and protecting and guiding Charles Tez Russell back in the 1870s. And now you're telling me that Jesus did not pick anybody until 1914, and then he picked Charles Tez Russell's organization. Isn't that playing favorites? I mean, Jehovah's already, back in 1870s, picked Charles Tez Russell and was leading him. Now you're telling me that Jesus comes into his kingdom in 1914 and looks all over the world to see who is the best Christians on the earth, and he finds that what happens to be Charles Tez Russell's organization. There's something wrong here. Jehovah's already picked Charles Tez Russell, from what you said, from what the Watchtower Bible Tract Society has said in their watchtowers, that Charles Tez Russell was picked by Jehovah back in the 1870s and has been led by Jehovah all this time. And so he's got the whole truth and he's got the closest to the truth. And that's why Jesus picked him. So it looks like somebody's playing favorites. And second of all, and I've said to the governing body, if that is true, that Jehovah picked uh, Charles Tess Russell back in the 1870s and was behind, and was leading him by his Holy Spirit, leading him toward the truth. And so that in 1914, Jesus comes in and sees that Charles Tess Russell, by chance, just have by chance, happens to be the one who is doing the most, uh, who is the closest to the truth. And, and I asked him, am I correct in assuming that? And they said, yes, that's, that's basically it. Good. Now, my last question is, how come when, uh, Char- when uh, Charles Tess Russell died in 1916, <clears throat> immediately the, the first president of the Watchtower Bible Truck Society took over, the first thing he did was summarily 
dismiss everything Charles Tess Russell had ever written, period, and said in the Watchtower, it was all a bunch of bull, it was crap, it has nothing to do with anything, and we got a whole new understanding. Everything Charles Tess Russell wrote from 1870 to the night he died in 1916 was a bunch of bull. He was, he was a good man, tried to do what was right, but he didn't know beans about anything that was going on, so it was all totally wrong. Well, Jesus, I thought, picked uh, Charles Tess Russell's organization because it was the closest to the truth. And now the, 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 the next president for the society said, no, the whole thing is a bunch of bull. Jesus must have been drinking that day when he picked him because Charles Tess Russell had no truth. It was all a bunch of bull and nothing to be, uh, you know, nothing to look at at all. So now you need to look at what we're saying today. That's the real truth. So I'm just saying that there's way too many, too many arguments can be made in a court of law to show the entire superstructure of Jehovah's Witnesses as a sham financed out of England by the Rothschilds, by the Rockefellers, and somebody better start doing their homework and looking what's happening to the whole world because of people like Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, and all the other cults. They're all working together. Yeah, for sure. 100%. It's a crime racket. People trafficking... They're doing it through legal tender and the legal name. That's it. And uh, they tell, they collect legal tender by the by the ton in their contribution boxes, and then collect more stolen property off Indigenous people. And um, they use the legal name to enslave them. It's the book of death. Um, I would be dealing with that legal name as uh, soon as possible and waive the benefits and be free, children and friends and brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers and get right out of Babylon the Great. That's what I would be saying, including the Jehovah's Witnesses and all of these. Now, so if, uh, uh, we, do we have a few moments left? We have about two minutes. Okay. Well, in the last two minutes, I would like to say that it's a real pleasure to be on the show and especially to be on with my dear friend Santos. Uh, Santos is an extraordinarily brilliant guy. I mean, all you have to do is look at his work, go on the web, and just type in his name on YouTube and listen to his lectures. If that doesn't uh, set you back about 10 years' growth, the, the wisdom and the knowledge that Santos has been, uh, you know, been talking about for so long, and I'm just honored to be on the program with Santos. He's a dear friend. And I want to thank Vinny for having me on the show, too. And my last and final words are, if you're interested in my work, you can go to Jordan Maxwell Show, S-H-O-W, because there's another website out there called jordanmaxwell.com, but that doesn't belong to me. That's the criminals who stole it from me. I'll be getting it back soon when the federal court gives me back my possessions that were stolen. But right now, if you want to contact me, just go on jordanmaxwellshow.com. And there's a con contact, send me an email, send the email to the Jordan Maxwell Show, and I'll get it. And again, thank you for having me on tonight. It's 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 basically the uh, best kind of show that I like, where you get two people who are like really great guests uh, in and of themselves together to have a bit of a conversation. It's, it's kind of like... Um, when one person's learning and the other person's uh, teaching, the energy flows kind of one way. But when, when there's two learned people who are kind of talking, they tend to be teaching each other and everybody gets to feed off it. Well, I've certainly learned a lot from, from Santos of that. There's no, there's no doubt. So. Yeah, look, I'll pay that back, uh, back at you, Jordan. Um, thank you for the kind compliments. And I... Um, uh, return with um, interest and um, tenfold more back to you because um, you set me on this path and then got and um, yeah just inspired me more and more so thank you too thanks for the listeners and please please share this uh, audio with all those people that are trapped in Babylon the Great the Jehovah's Witnesses etc let's free them free them from the legal name from legal tender and start afresh with de jure genuine living government we are the government we're self-determined go go let's go it's important to stay motivated when you when you're faced with this this kind of thing and I was uh, considering earlier today 
somebody said, you know, what group do I associate with? Are you a truther or whatever? And uh, into conspiracies, etc. You know, and I said, well, one of the uh, chief tenets of talking about and discussing conspiracies is that you think independently and you don't really identify with a group. You, you're not part of the group think paradigm anymore. It's like, sorry, bro, you know, I've done that before. And turns out every time that everybody's thinking one thing, it's because they're being told that there's one truth when there's many. So the only time you can really ever get people totally organized and agreeing on everything is to agree to a generally accepted lie that people are willing to swallow because the truth is probably just a little bit too scary for their little minds to tolerate I'm not speaking down to anybody here. It happens to all of us. It happened to me. And hopefully, one day, it'll happen to you too. And when it messes up your life, you'll be so grateful that you, you did this at this time instead of waiting a little bit long uh, uh, later on down the track. It's kind of imperative, isn't it, to wake up as soon as possible, no matter what you lose in the process, because you kind of got a moral obligation. We'll see you again sometime, ladies and gentlemen, at the Vinnie Eastwood Show dot com. Thank you also to freedomslips dot com as a listener supported network. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening. Catch you later. many many of our works and so that's all taken care of all corporations come under the mother the whore of babylon the umbrella of all umbrellas and it probably goes back to constantine and the donation of constantine or you could go back probably to the flavian dynasty or the julian dynasty that set this up uh pope boniface of course in 1300 did uh, some damage with his papal bull so anyway that's more than i wanted to say and um i'll probably hand it over to jordan now santos also your microphone may be a little bit close to a, a, a computer or something we hear this kind of low uh, hum over the time but anyway uh jordan would you like to pick up where he left off well, yeah, I, I would even say that, uh, or explain uh, a little more, that corporations, as, uh, as Santos said, are are actually dead because they, are, you know, you can't take a corporation, you can't take uh, the Watchtower Bible uh, Track Society as a company, as a corporation. You can't take the Watchtower Society out for dinner. Uh, it's it's a, just a name. It's just a name of a company. So it has no life. It's just the name of a corporation, uh, and so there is a uh, there is the church, as uh, Santo said, the Church of the Living and the Church of the Dead. Well, the Church of the Dead is a corporation, a company, but the Church of the Living are the actual living people in it. Now that's different. The, the, now we're talking about the people. So tonight we're not talking about the people, the Church of the Living. We're talking about the Church of the Dead meaning the corporations, which uh, actually have no real life at all. They're just a, just a corporate name. Are they, so, are they <clears throat> registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission? Because we've looked up that uh, New Zealand itself is uh, a corporation under the Queen and Right of New Zealand registered at the SEC. Is it the same for the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Church of the Dead? I would suspect so, because I also know that the Mormon Church is a corporation, uh, and uh, and we found out, and I I was uh, shocked to find out that uh, Islam, the very religion of Islam, is a corporation soul. Uh, on the British uh, in in Britain, it's considered a corporation, a company, and it's called a corporation soul in England. And I would uh, send uh, some of that information and documents. To uh, to you, <clears throat> that's interesting. That even Islam is a company. Well, so could uh, could Islam then be uh, uh, defined as sole traders? Probably, yeah. Uh, it, it, that's the kind of thing that Santos is so good at breaking down how these corporations are intermingling cosmic 
ideas about living people and how they owned your body and your soul, etc. So, yeah, I'm sure that there's a lot of information that needs to be brought out about Islam, Judaism, and Christianity as corporations, as companies, because that's what they are. They're on the stock market. I mean, it's an incredible story of how this stuff really works. And, of course, Jehovah's Witnesses are right in the middle. You've got to figure they're right in the middle of all of this. If they're in New York City and Brooklyn, now, my God, anybody who lives in America knows what Brooklyn is all about. Brooklyn is the center and has been for a long time, for many, many years. Brooklyn, New York has been the center for mafia, for Jewish Zionism, for all the uh, corruption, all the underworld stuff that's been going on in America. It's a very serious area of corruption and occult power in Brooklyn, New York. Well, that was the home, and that's the home of, of Jehovah's Witnesses around the world who are in charge of the different congregations, the ministers, so to speak, are themselves pompous, arrogant, self-centered, egotistical, because most have never had a, a position of responsibility in their life, and finally they get a place in the congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses where they are ministers and they're in charge, and for the first time they can be in charge of something and, and start lording it over everybody else, because they're in charge, and so there are some very, uh, there are some few uh, elders and ministers and Jehovah's Witnesses who are very decent, very fine people. But by large, by and large, I think that the overwhelming majority are very self-centered, egotistical, and self-serving uh, because they're climbing the power, they're climbing the ladder to power within the organization. But that happens in all uh, all organizations, unfortunately. But So what I'm saying is that Jehovah's Witnesses are no different than anybody else on the earth. There's always good, there's bad, there's brilliant intelligence, there's stupidity. Anytime you get people into an organization, we're not condemning the people. We're talking about the facts of the of the corporation, the company, and the concepts and the ideas. So I just wanted to make sure people understand that. I have nothing against Jehovah's Witnesses as a people. Because he used to be one. His mum was one. And you get the idea, ladies and gentlemen. I presume uh, similar sentiments from you, Santos. Yeah, that was well said. I agree that that is uh, simply a... Uh, Oh, we're getting some really bad oh. talk chatter on your line there, Santos. Can't oh, really? Me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's let's try that again. <laughs> is, is that better? I think a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll just try and uh, change the position of the mic. It might be a bit faulty. Uh, yeah, I agree with um, that wonderful um, prefacing of this. Uh, this topic. It's um, simply because organisations which have people in them uh, will always have a mixed uh, eclectic um, group to contend with and so that's already going to be you know, something to have to manage. Yeah. Um, but uh, certainly it's the organisation here that we are going to um, reveal s certain facts about the organisation. Because what's really going on here is there are two churches really going on. There's the Church of the Living and the Church of the Dead. Now, the Church of the Dead is the what they call the organization. You know, it's corporatized. Uh, hence the title, uh, Watchtower and Track Society Incorporated. Uh, I've brought this out um, to many Jehovah's Witnesses because I did do about probably 35 years of my life with the Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, and I can go into a little, just a brief history to, um, so that people know that I know who I'm talking about here. I, 35 years, I was a ministerial servant. I served in a Portuguese-speaking congregation in Melbourne for four years, Italian-speaking congregation for four years in the northeast of Victoria, Wangaratta, Myrtleford. I um, served in some Spanish, just uh, giving uh, talks 
etc., etc. And all the English-speaking um, people know me too, especially in Victoria. You know, I was um, quite well known. You know? So, um, but uh, the corporation is corpse means dead, and it's every, all corporations are under the Vatican. That's what I'll um, say. I'm not going to elaborate about that um, because I've done that. And so was Jordan in uh, corporations. Up until uh, corporations get involved in things for the money, generally. So the question is, where does the money come from to feed this corporation, and where does the money go once it's been sucked in? <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good question. I I can answer that. Many years ago, back in 1980s, early 80s. I went to an international convention here in Los Angeles of Jehovah's Witnesses. And at that international convention, there were three members, three of the members of the governing body. There's a, there's a handful of men, I think there's 12 of them, in New York headquarters for Jehovah's Witnesses that actually run the organization. There are 12 men, just like the Mormon Church has 12 uh, 12 prophets who run the Mormon church. Well, Jehovah's Witnesses have 12 men also who run their church, and there's there's a reason why it's always 12 at the top. But anyway, uh, I was at an international convention here in Los Angeles back in the early 80s, <clears throat> and I knew two of the members of the governing body personally, Dan Selick, and I uh, can't remember the other guy's name now, <clears throat> It was an old Greek guy. And uh, so after the uh, convention was over, uh, the governing body members, there were three of them, and all of the people around them, their entourage, were all going out to dinner. <clears throat> and I was invited to go. And uh, at dinner, uh, I, I, there was a young man there, young Greek young Greek guy there who was the um, accountant for, he was the chief accountant for the Watchtower and Bible Tract Society, Jehovah's Witnesses headquarters in New York, and he was the chief accountant. And so we're talking about the organization, etc., and I'm just listening to these uh, these big shots talking about the company and about the corporation, etc. <clears throat> and then I asked him, I asked this young man, I said, uh, in the yearbook, you know, in the in the books which are printed by the Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, this was in early 80s. I said, uh, in the most recent uh, book on your on your company, uh, it says that you have spent like 65 million dollars uh, just on salaries alone. 65 million on salaries alone for this year, and so I asked him. And that does not include all of the construction, all of the <clears throat> buildings and property which is being bought all over the world by Jehovah's Witnesses. So my question is, where are you getting the money? <clears throat> because I live here in Los Angeles, and uh, and the congregations here are you know are just scraping and getting by from month to month. On contributions, and yet the New York headquarters is spending 65 million just in salaries alone around the world, and so and so there's an enormous amount of money that's being spent each year by the organization, <clears throat> the world headquarters. So I asked him, "Where are you getting the money?" And he said to me, "He said the corporation called you the Watch Our Bible Tract Society Company." has what is called an open-in account with two of the major banks in America. One is, is the, uh, this is back in the 80s, he said one of the, one of the banks is the uh, uh, Chase Manhattan Bank and the other is the Morgan Guarantee Bank in uh, Philadelphia. Morgan Guarantee and Chase Manhattan <clears throat> we have a open in corporate accounts with them and the and the and the governing body are sitting there listening to me talking to their chief accountant and it became very quiet because now you're talking about the money now you're talking about where the uh, you know where the real power is and so they were listening to see what was going to be said <clears throat> and so he told me he said 
we have open-end accounts with both of those banks. And I said, what do you mean by an open-end account? And he says, basically, both banks uh, give us a checkbook once a year. And whatever checks we write are covered, period. No matter what it is, it's an open-end account. We write the checks, and they are, uh, they are they're good. <clears throat> and whatever, you know, and so there's no limit on it. Well, <clears throat> that told me something right then because Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for talking about the the evil, corrupt uh, politicians and bankers, et cetera, et cetera. Well, at the time, Chase Manhattan and Morgan Guarantee Trust, Morgan Guarantee Trust was, uh, was affiliated with uh, the Rothschild banks out of England. And everybody knows about the Rockefeller banks in New York, Chase Manhattan. And here this uh, accountant is telling me, no, no, the Chase Manhattan and Morgan Guarantee Trust are financing us with an open-in account. Whatever we need, we write the check, it's good. So I don't know what that tells you. Go back and think about it. Uh, when it comes to money, if somebody gives you money... They want something back for it, an exchange. What's the exchange? What are the Jehovah's Witnesses doing for the bankers? Well, I think that's very obvious. What they're doing is that Jehovah's Witnesses are a, uh, are a Jewish Zionist operation. Uh, I've known that for many, many years. They are, they are being financed by secret funds, that uh, end up in Chase Manhattan and, uh, and Morgan Guaranteed Trust to finance uh, propaganda machines for what we refer to as uh, Zionist uh, propaganda for New World Order. And so Jehovah's Witnesses are famous for talking about Jehovah's New World. It's not Jesus' New World. It's Jehovah's New World. Jehovah is a... Is a one of the names of uh, the Hebrew God that we use today. So the original Watchtower magazine, originally back in 1870s, 1869, 1870, when Charles Tez Russell began to publish the Watchtower Society, uh, published the Watchtower magazine, it was not called Christian's Watchtower or Jesus' Watchtower. It was called Zion's Watchtower, Z-I-O-N-S, Zion's Watchtower. And, and there were pictures in the old original Zion's Watchtowers, of which I had the complete set from the 1870s, but pictures in those Zion's Watchtowers of Charles Tez Russell, the founder, uh, on board ship with Baron de Filippi de Rothschild, Baron von Hurst, Chien Weissman, the founders of the Zionist movement. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it was very well known that uh, that the International Bible Students. That's what they were called. They weren't called Jehovah's Witnesses back then. That didn't come until 1939. Originally, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses were referred to as the IBSA, International Bible Students Association. And uh, the public, and as I said, the Watchtower had pictures of Charles Tez Russell on board uh, large ships uh, going back to England and it, it Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the very first episode of the Vinnie Eastwood Show, bringing together the most fabulous, dark, occulted mystic, knowledge, wisdom, truth, etc. My very special guests joining me today to mark the kicking off of a new age, a new degree, maybe even the 34th one will be Santos Bonacci from Australia and the Universal Truth School dot com. Say hello, Santos. Hello, Vinny. Thank you very much for having me on the show. 
And in the blue corner, wearing the Masonic black and white shorts, we have Jordan Maxwell, who is still here. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still here, Vinny, and happy to be on the show. Jordan Maxwell Show dot com is is the uh, is the blippity blue for that one there and this topic for today is something that is very personal for both of my guests and very uh shall we say unknown to me and i'd probably include with the royal me including pretty much everybody who doesn't know the jehovah's witnesses inside and out you know these people that come to your door and um the, the, the reason they get out of uh, uh, police speeding tickets and things like that, you know, cop pull, pulls a Jehovah's Witness over. I've got a, I've got a fine here for you. Well, have you got some time to talk about our Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> all right, all right, I'll let you off with a warning. Now, I'd like to see if we can encapsulate this here. What, who, indeed define the parameters, is the Jehovah's Witness organization? Who would like to start? Well, maybe I will, um, because there are a few things I think need to be said before we even enter into this subject. For one thing, uh, I, I'm not in any way uh, saying anything about Jehovah's Witnesses, the people, because I know them. I was one for a while, and my mother was one. So I know that there are a lot of very, very good, sweet, and very decent people who are in uh, who belong to Jehovah's Witnesses? So I'm in no way talking about them. <clears throat> but uh, as a matter of fact, some of the people that I have met in Jehovah's Witnesses were some of the nicest and most decent people you'll ever want to meet. So we're not talking about the people. Just as uh, when I talk about the Vatican, I'm not talking about the Catholic people. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about organizations. So. That's, I'd like to, you know, set the matter straight. We're not complaining or, or condemning Jehovah's Witnesses as a people. But no we're more, talking about... No more than you'd yeah. condemn the people who serve you the burger at McDonald's when you criticize the CEO putting uh, ingredients <laughs> that aren't fit for human consumption in the produce. Right, right. But they're not responsible for that. And, uh, and you're not responsible, you know, and, uh, but you are responsible for eating it. So... Uh, I, I have a very warm place in my heart for Jehovah's Witnesses. I know so many of them, and they've been very good people. But uh, I would say, and I think Santos would, would agree, that probably anywhere from 50 to 75% of the overseers, the elders and the, and the men in the congregation,